so welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us to uh, Tuesday lunch with Rita webinar. And today uh, we will speak about tattoos in immune mediated diseases. And um, I am Sophie Georgin Lavial. I am a professor of internal medicine in Paris, France, and I am part of the French National Reference Center for Auto Inflammatory Disease and Amyloidosis in Tunnel Hospital. And uh, it's uh, my great pleasure to be your moderator today. So please uh, do use the chat to let us know where you are joining uh, us from. So we will be very happy to know how many countries uh, are represented today. Um, so you can use uh, the question tab uh, on the right hand side of your screen. So it will be an interactive session. Uh, thanks to this, you can ask your question at any time during the presentation and during the Q&A that will follow and I will read the questions and I will ask them to Nicola. So today it's a great pleasure to um, to listen to uh, Nicola Kluger. So I was very happy. I, I know Nicola since uh, I will say 15 years and we were uh, together in a master two in Paris in uh, fundamental immunology. So he's a uh, uh, very good in immunology also. That's why we chose him. <laughs> uh, and so now uh, Nicolas uh, is an adjunct professor specialized in dermatology and venerology at Helsinki University Hospital in Finland. He is also a consultant in uh, Bisha Hospital in Paris, France. And uh, he's a very, very uh, internationally famous uh, specialist of tattoos. And so uh, he's um, always uh, doing uh, talk everywhere and uh, you can find him in social media also uh, so he's uh, very busy and he uh, it's a great uh, pleasure for us to listen to him today because tattoos are enjoying a, a growing success and sometimes even in scenes like a must have for uh, patients for people so however it's very legitimate to wonder if it, this practice may be at risk especially for patients with immune mediated disease and Nicolas, we provide an overview of this subject, food for thoughts and doctors and their patients. So welcome, Nicolas. The screen is yours. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you very much for inviting me today. So uh, I was asked uh, to, uh, to make this talk about uh, tattoos and immune mediated diseases. But of course, problem is that uh, I cannot talk only about uh, mediated immune disease. I need to give you a bit of an overview. There's a lot of pictures of patients. So please, even though it's only tattoos, uh, keep the picture you would take only for the non-tattooed part. Uh, and yes, I have a consultation in Bisha since 2017. There is a few consultations specialized in tattoo problems in Europe. You have it in Denmark, in the Netherlands, uh, in Italy also. So you have a few places you can find uh, places where you could go if you have a tattoo problems. Uh, and um, So just to remind you that, of course, the interest has grown worldwide. Uh, you can see on Google Trends that people are looking for tattoos all the time, especially in summertime. But um, you see it's been a, a regular trend that has been growing. We could see a little diminishment at the end of 2019. So it would be interesting to see if the youngest generation, the new alpha generation, is interested in tattoos or not. We will see that. And the overall uh, prevalence of tattoos among adults is currently about 20 percent uh, so one adult out of five do has at least one tattoo so that's quite uh, a huge number and we can translate it also this number to the patient for the child for the sorry for the teenagers it's a little bit less but we also have uh, an amount of nine to ten percent of the teenagers uh, under 18 years old who has tattoos so, of course, going to the tattooist, it's not uh, anymore uh, uh, some place which is dirty, isolated, hidden, but it's uh, wide, uh, lighted spaces. As you can see here, if you go to a professional tattoo parlor, they are working with material which has either sterilized or single use. They have disinfectant. They work really in the professional ones are working in cleaner uh, 
situation. As you can see, a part of the tools are sterilized, a part are going to be single use and thrown away. And basically what happens if you want a tattoo, you go to the tattooist, you are discussing the drawing, he will draw it to you. Usually it will take some time, you have to take an appointment especially if it's someone known, then you will usually do the drawings first. Some people do it also by hand directly on the skin. And uh, you have then the shape applied and then you do the drawings and you can see immediately the inflammation that develops when you are getting a tattoo with this typical peau d'orange uh, skin uh, with the follicles which are dilated, a bit red, um, uh, edematous, it's sensitive, it's painful. And you have, of course, bleeding. Although here it's a bleeding that I left intentionally. Of course, during the procedure, the tattooist is wiping all the time, but you can see all the drops uh, which are related to every site of puncture of the tattoo, of the, of the, of the, of the tattoo machine gun. Then you do the first plaque, and then you do the colors, and you see the inflammation at the end around uh, the tattoo when the tattoo is completed uh, so it's really sensitive and warm to the touch and it will take about two to three weeks for the tattoo to heal uh, and then you will have the epidemies that will peel away uh, shed away and uh, then the new epidemies will, will go over it because the pigment are located only in the dermis uh, and the superficial pigments that are left in the epidemis are going to go away with the healing. Of course, I cannot uh, stress that you should avoid any unusual places to get a tattoo, like this kind of van, bus, small bus like I could find in Finland. All that is completely to be avoided because of possible septic and infectious risks. And if you look at the biopsy, you will see the epidemis, which is normal. Uh, and in the dermis, you can find the visible pigments that will give the permanency to the tattoo design. Uh, a very brief word of the pigment. I'm not going to talk about that today, but uh, there is not much pigment that the, the manufacturer has. There's only 40, 44 pigments uh, that are available in the market. And the, then the manufacturer is doing combination with it to get the color so you have over 1400 inks available in the states but you have only 44 colors and in you usually in one ink in one color you will still have three different pigments in general and just to show you the problem that is faced now with the new regulation is europe uh, because two inks are most likely excessively being forbidden, uh, the pigment blue 15 and the pigment green 7, and as you can see in this slide, they are the big component of the color. So by taking them out, you are taking off green and blue colors and associated color like violet or turquoise. So that's why the palette is drawing drastically with the new regulation, and that's why there have been lots of discussion about this, um, this pigment being banned by the European legislation. But today I'm going just to talk about all these aspects that are more concerned for you as a patient. Infections. Of course, you can get infections after tattooing. This is a customer that contacted me and she was describing this unusual evolution of a tattoo with this crust and inflammation. And actually, I asked her simply like if she was doing something special and she reported that she had prednisolon for another reason. And of course, then it became obvious that the, what happened is that you had an impact of prednisolone on the healing and most likely the tattooist was not aware or did not see any problem with it. And the possible infection, because it's always very difficult in this kind of situation not to think that there is also an infection associated with the reaction. And you have the result one month later after proper treatment with the black color that has been uh, eliminated due to the uh, due to the lack of uh, proper healing and infection you can have other infection like this one with fo follicles abscess uh, boils it can be done also because of shaving the area that is uh, another possible explanation this is another patient which was having um, several uh, uh, problem with his tattoos when he came to see me, repetitive and recurrent infection. And when we discussed about his condition and, and uh, we realized that actually he was not totally doing the aftercare correctly, 
because he was using this kind of a natural soap that you can buy in pharmacy, but you know the thin that you find in pharmacies that are intended for people who have dry skin, they are not really cleaning that much as we would like for this kind of procedure, and it most likely lead it to this uh, recurrent infection because he did that on every of his tattoos that he had, and uh, since he corrected his procedure, I haven't heard from him, so I assume that now everything is fine. Uh, tattoos that you can get old school are also a problem and we had have severe cases of infection uh, reported in Australia and New Zealand because you get tattooed on the old school way uh, but this was again tattoos performed in uh, homemade tattoos and tattoos made in garage so in unsterile condition and also people like to travel and get these kind of tattoos done uh, abroad and especially in, in New Zealand and this customer did this very extensive tattoo, which was going fine. Unfortunately, he decided to come back to France immediately after the tattoo. And of course, you can imagine that staying 19 hours with not moving in on a plane with the inflammation and the edema, it makes uh, the, the trip horrible. And this is not recommended. But if you get a tattoo done abroad, especially if you have long haul flights, you should really take days to rest in the country where you had the tattoo done before taking the trip and avoid this kind of quick back and return because this leads to catastrophe and also an risks of having a, a tattoo which is not totally perfect and you're not going to redo it because the tattooist is like uh, on the other side of the world. This is a patient to get a tattoo in Africa and he saw this reaction come very quickly after the tattoo, uh, only on some areas. This has been a recurrent problem the past 10, 20 years. We had a lot of this case of patients who come with this kind of very specific rash quickly after tattooing only on gray colors. And if we look, we can find some mycobacteria uh, that are found in the samples. And this is most likely due to use of water and non-sterile water, distillated water or um, tap water that are used to mix the black color to obtain a gray shade. And as you can see on some of the tattoos, black colors are spared, but only the gray shadings have been infected by the germ, most likely because of that. Uh, this is another very rare situation, but a patient who has just got tattooed and suddenly has this very unusual rash very quickly. And, and she was already tattooed, so she never had any problems before. So uh, it was a little bit uh, unus unusual uh, for, the, for us and the dermatologist who consulted me. So we just suspected that it should be infectious because it got very fast after the tattooing. So we took, a, the colleague took a bacterial and a, uh, and a mycological uh, sampling. And there was a tinea, so um, a fungus in the skin. Uh, microsporum canis, and then when we then when we discussed with the patient for what we discovered that her her dog was losing her the hairs, and the sister of the patient had the same symptoms. And actually, it was a, an infection, most likely coming from the dog, which was infected by a, a fungus. And actually, we know in dermatology that areas of traumas are more prone to get uh, an infection by fungus, and the tattoo was actually healing at the same time. So you have also to be aware of this kind of possibility. Very quickly about uh, HIV, hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Currently, uh, it's considered that if you get a tattoo in a correct tattoo parlors and work with sterile material and single-use material, you have absolutely no risk to get hepatitis C, B or HIV. And as a consequence, it is considered that the uh, excessive ban that has been applied to tattooed people for, for giving their blood uh, is over exaggerated and this is more a problem in terms of uh, um, letting let, giving the blood because people don't tend to come back when they have been uh, refused once. Allergic and other complication, tattoos can crust, that's normal, that happens, it's not a complication, this is not just you have to moisturize it more. You can have uneven healing, it happens, you have just to go back to the tattooist and get the tattoo done again. Um, you can get very swollen on your arm when you get tattoos. This is normal, but you have to be uh, very careful uh, on the leg. And you can understand what happened to this customer that went uh, to New Zealand to get a tattoo and back very quickly after. The edema was quite strong in the flight and it was a problem. 
Uh, also, a patient who developed uh, a phlebitis after tattering, that's very unusual, but that can happen. And the reason is that, of course, if you stay in an awkward position for a long time and you have already varicosities, most likely it can precipitate uh, this risk of, of, um, of phlebitis, of superficial thrombophlebitis. So that's why you should make breaks, walk, drink a lot, and avoid very long sessions if you are prone to this kind of uh, uh, problem. And you can see this is usually what you can say as a tattooist uh, and uh, uh, if you do in a convention you have very un un uncomfortable position. Sometimes you have this kind of reaction. It's a patient who got uh, this kind of crust which looks like an infection. Actually it's not totally only that. It's most likely uh, the tattooist which has been forcing quite a lot to get the tattoo black. As you can see the arm is black because the customer wanted it completely black. But to get completely black, a perfect black, you really have to go and go and go and go on the skin to get it done and at some point the needle starts to be used and cut and so firstly what happened for this patient. It's called needle trauma or overwork tattoo and it's not an uncommon situation. The problem is that when it happens, uh, usually the, the tattooist will say to stop everything and uh, not apply anything and it gets even worse and it crust when on the opposite you should moisturize more and even if necessary treat by antibiotics because yet again you are not really sure that it's infected or not. And this is how it went finally with proper healing within a week but you can see that there will be the results uneven. You can get uh, contact eczema, contact dermatitis because after the tattooing you are applying moisturizers and there are moisturizers which have lots of fragrance and other things in it that can pr provide uh, such uh, contact eczema. You can get bruises which can be very extensive but there has never been any uh, catastrophic bleeding after tattooing. You have also uh, uh, what's called a tattoo blowout when the tattoo looks like a bruise but actually it's the color of the pigment that has gone very deep in the skin. It's quite not, it's not that uncommon but sometimes customer doesn't notice it and sometimes they notice it and of course if they notice it they are not happy. So the pigment has dropped in the in the hypodermis, in the fat. In this situation there's not much to do than either accept it or we can do some laser or get a new tattoo to cover it. You can have lots of little complaints on a tattoo, itching, elevation, sun-induced, sensitivity. This is the most typical situation. You have a tattoo which was fine and a few months after suddenly one color starts to raise. It's very itchy, it can be painful and you have the classic uh, tattoo allergy to a color and usually it's red or pink. As you can see, all the, only the drawings in red are affected. The black is very fine. This is very frequent. This is very frequent for the red color. Uh, it can happen a month after, within a few months, or even years after. And you have different patterns here as a picture. But you see, we see a lot of that. Colleagues see a lot of that. Usually it's on the red color. It can be on the brown. It can be on the pink. It can be on the permanent makeup. You have more CV cases sometimes with very uh, swollen, hypertrophic. You can have this kind of uh, ulceration or more extensive rash. More rarely it can happen. Um, you can have a reaction after sun exposure. The tattoo was fine and only the sun exposed areas have triggered a reaction on the skin. And what happens? Why do people have an allergy? The hypothesis is basically that when you put the pigment in the skin, it's not normal. So your immunity collects it. Um, for some reason, whether it is the sun, whether you try a laser removal, or something happened, and basically the uh, the ink is going to change, and this new byproduct is going to be basically memorized by your immune system, and one day you will get in contact again with the very same agent, maybe a new tattoo, but maybe it's something in the food, a vaccination or something, which will re-trigger the reaction. So you, that would, that's the explanation that we have right now for such reaction and why the reaction comes. So basically you get a tattoo, the pigment changes for some reason, and then you are re-exposed to it and your immunity starts to wake up and uh, basically react against the tattoo. How do we treat it? You can have lots of treatment, local corticosteroids, infiltration. At the last, you can destroy the tattoo or discuss to take it off. And for some very specific situation, we can give also oral treatment. So this is some picture to show how works this treatment. And cortisone works very fine. 
uh, we can take, do injections. Uh, and sometimes you cannot do anything uh, locally because it's beyond repair and then you may have to decide to take it off like in those cases you can just take off the tattooed area completely by different techniques. A patient who has a reaction on the black and you can see when I took the biopsy it was very very black you can see how black it is on the skin and then it was a diagnosis by the pathologist was granuloma, which opens to other diagnoses. So we can get better with treatments, as you can see. And it opens one this, this, the chapter of one disease, which is called sarcoidosis, that you may have heard about, which is a disease that affects the lung and the skin. But this disease in dermatology, we know it very well because this sarcoidosis like scars. So we have patients who come in consultation with scars that has changed. And when we make the biopsy, we say it's a granuloma. And when we do the checkup, we say they have sarcoidosis. And a tattoo is just another scar among the list of scars. You have, and that's how it reveals the disease. I'm not going to go through too much about that, but uh, it's something that we know, uh, that we see. We usually make the diagnosis of sarcoidosis. It's ra quite rare that the patient with sarcoidosis gets the tattoo and comes. It's still possible, but it's more a rare situation. I'm going to go a bit faster on that because it's not necessary. This is how it looks like. Usually it's on black tattoos. They have some kind of little lumps that comes. Sometimes that can go away. Not all the tattoo is affected. It can also affect uh, the permanent makeup and eyebrows, especially this is a very common situation. We see people where women with permanent makeup and the eyebrows start to rise. This is very much a, a very big suspicion we have of this disease. Uh, sometimes we don't find anything else on the body, which is a good thing. Sometimes the patient has a past history of sarcoidosis. We find the reaction and we tell him, okay, it's just sarcoidosis going on your tattoos. And on another part, the patient never heard about sarcoidosis. Come for this reaction, we find the granuloma. And when we do the checkup, we find the disease which is underlying in other parts of the body. In this situation, you can see that actually the tattoo helped to do the diagnosis. Okay, it's just a bystander, a witness of the disease. We have seen also patients having very severe inflammation in the eye associated with these granulomas without sarcoidosis. We don't really know yet what it means. So we have this kind of patient who comes and they have also eye inflammation. So usually it's a specialist who sees them. Cancer, to make it very clear, there is no, uh, there is a fortuitous association with skin cancer. There is only a specific cancer that is called keratoacanthoma that we can see from time to time on tattoos. MRI, uh, that you could read that you cannot take an MRI because of tattoos, it's not true. The, it can happen that you have sometimes people complaining of symptoms, this is very rare. Uh, most likely on old black tattoos. The radiologist knows that well. Basically, if you feel a symptoms of stinging, pringing, or burning feeling at the beginning of the session, you just push the button and inform the radiologist about the symptoms, and he will decide how to for, proceed, proceed for the tree, for the imaging. But it has been studied that it's exceedingly rare this side effect, so there is absolutely no contraindication to get an MRI if you have a tattoo. Sometimes the lymph nodes are getting black. That's a fact. The lymph nodes are working very fine, but it is a, a coincidental finding. The problem is that sometimes we do exams for the patient like PET scan, and now we realize that these lymph nodes can be activated. And this is a problem not as such, but because we do PET scanner for people who have cancer, when we see that, well, the doctor is almost obliged to go and take a lymph node to check what's going on inside. So that makes extra uh, unnecessary and potentially stressful examination and exploration for a patient. But then when you look at the story, this patient had a tattoo in the back and the lymph nodes were just draining lymph nodes of the tattoo that were just full of, tat of pigment and were activated on the images of the PET scanner. Chronic skin disease, I have a rash on my tattoo and I have psoriasis. Well, it can happen. You can have psoriasis on tattoos. You can, it's because we know that psoriasis, like trauma, it is uh, almost one of its features. Uh, vitiligo, this disease that makes depigmentation of the skin, also is a disease that like trauma. So it's very rare, but it can happen. 
Uh, keloid is always a question that I am asked. Actually, strangely, keloid is not very frequent, and I don't really contraindicate patients with keloid to get a tattoo. I would definitely contraindicate piercings, but for, for tattoos, it's not the case. It can be seen, but you see this patient who had keloids on some tattoos doesn't have it everywhere, so it's really, really um, difficult to assess, but it's still a very rare phenomenon. In general, any skin disease can theoretically go on your tattoo, uh, and we have a lot of cases of lupus or other diseases that have been reported on the tattoo, and what we do is just treat them the very same way we would treat a patient without the tattoo reaction. We have published with Christa de Kuiper a practical guide about tattooing in patients with chronic skin disorder. It's like an uh, ABC to Z. We have put different diseases and different suggestions on what you can do and what you couldn't do. Of course, it's just an expert opinion. It's not perfect, but it's better than nothing if you are a physician and you need to consult and to check what can you do. Contraindication and precautions. Uh, as you know, I see patients that come to my consultation for tattoos, they sometimes come to ask advice before tattoos. I do that on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. They send the letter, and if I consider that it's important, I meet them. You can see that I even have patients with a heart transplant who came to see me to, get, to know if she could get a tattoo. So you have lots of questions. Patients come for acne, patients patient with allergy to nickel, etc., who comes to ask questions, can I get a tattoo or not? Uh, is there any contraindication? Although the problem, of course, is that patients are always a bit lost between the physicians because the patient may fear the judgmental approach. Does the doctor is being too cautious and think, no, 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 you cannot do it, lack of knowledge. If you go on the internet, you will have very random advices and fake news. So it's a bit of a problem. So let's go through it. A lot of side was the vaccination because with COVID it has started some comment where you cannot get a, tattoo, a vaccination on a tattoo. That of course is not true. Uh, what you cannot get a vaccination is if the tattoo is recent and healing, of course. And conversely, if you have got a vaccination shot on the biceps and you want a tattoo at the same place, please wait at least one to two months before doing it. Of course, the best is that the nurse or the doctor avoids the area, but as the last resort, uh, you can get uh, the vaccination on the tattoo. This is my old who gets vaccinated against COVID and against influenza every year, and it's very fine. And the consequences, of course, of that is this is a case in Finland where the nurse wanted at all costs to avoid the tattoo, and as you can see the picture of the bandage, it's way too high, and the nurses ask, uh, sting directly in the shoulder, and it has been reported with COVID, this CIRVA, shoulder injury related to vaccine administration. There have been several cases, especially with the generalization of corona vaccination, of uh, misinjection at the wrong site. So no, she could have put it in the kiss tattoo with no risk. There is no strict contraindication, but there is a long list of conditions for which a medical advice should be sought first. It's a case-by-case -case tailor-made decision after discussion with the benefits-risk balance with the patient. So if you're healthy, of course, there is no problem, no drug, no alcohol, no acute infection, no pregnancy, and you can get tattoos. There is a location we have to discuss. If you have a chronic disease, it depends if it's internal. We, you have to take into account diabetes, heart condition, HIV, immunosuppression and the treatments for that. And if you have a skin disease, um, we will see its uh, coincidental findings before tattooing, which can be a problem. So the localization, I'm not going to talk about the eye. Obviously, you don't do that. It's to be avoided. Lower back tattoo and epidural analgesia, I tell you immediately, there's no problem. You can tattoo around surgical scar, except melanomas and, and skin cancer scars. And you know that you can also get tattooed after a mastectomy, and uh, it's something that is widely done, either the nipple areola tattoo or a more designed uh, tattoo. Do you have allergies? Alors, if you have already allergies, yes, you have to avoid the same color. Okay, this is a patient who tried it again, and unfortunately, she got a reaction. So really proving that there is really immunity circulating in the body, remembering the pigment. So if you have an allergy to a color, avoid the color. That is a simple thing. Don't do any tests. It's uh, forbidden uh, because it's not helping. We don't know uh, what to inject. We don't know how long you should read it. It has no point. Uh, so, um, 
uh, then you have the chronic skin conditions. Uh, is a nickel allergy a contraindication? Uh, for me, no, it's not right now a contraindication. Uh, so um, I don't contraindicate it. It's a bit debated, but it has to be discussed with the patient. But right now, the inks should respect the regulation about that. Uh, the nickel should be at the lowest rate possible. Uh, so right now, I tend not to uh, contraindicate waiting for new data. In case of chronic skin disorder, Avoid tattooing if the disease is active. That's kind of logic. You're not going to do it when you have a full flare of psoriasis or atopic dermatitis. It has no sense. Wait for the disease to be quiescent or adequately treated, of course. You, if you don't really know your disease, ask the doctor if it's a disease known to uh, go on scars. For instance, psoriasis, vitiligo, lichen planus are known disease. Atopic eczema is not a disease that goes on trauma, or usually. Of course, you may get a treatment. Then you will discuss about that at the end. Immunosuppressive treatment, is it, it's by such a contraindication. And in doubt, always ask advice to your dermatologist or treating physician. Coincident finding, I'm just going to be very clear. You never, to make it simple, never tattoo anything on the skin, whether it's old or recent. That's the most simple thing. Then we can discuss at the case by case, uh, on the case by case, if we can tattoo it or not because we are not that close, but in a doubt, if you're alone, you have a mole, you don't do it. Uh, this is a patient that has advice. It's a, it's a congenital lesion, uh, most likely a Becker nevus, and you see the tattooist has already, has already prepared the drawing, and he was asking now, can I do it or not? I think we refused. I give a negative uh, advice. Retrospectively, now I'm thinking about it. I think there's no reason that I do it, that I refuse it, because this lesion is benign. And the risk of cancerization of these lesions are exceedingly are exceptional. There are just few case reports, and this condition is very common. So this is the example also that we can change our position uh, with time. So it's not what I said today is the truth for today, but tomorrow I could say the opposite if I'm given another evidence. And now I think for this customer, I could have said yes. Moles, that has to be avoided because we cannot follow them. You see example of moles that has been tattooed, and it's hard for us to um, to uh, to um, see if it's benign or not. So no, this one that has been tattooed over, super bad. Uh, and patients that are following this patient with melanoma with lots of moles, very difficult to follow. So leave space. Tattoos are sometimes very smart for that. And in doubt, well, we have to sacrifice the tattoo anyway. If a mole looks strange, we take it out. This one was benign, but that's true that it looks bad. Well, at least we want to take it out. For melanoma, it's not a strict contraindication, but it has to be discussed with a, with a dermatologist. And you never tattoo a surgery scars or the moles. And patients with family history of melanoma, we have to decide of the area where we're going to take it and of course avoid to put it completely black. Diabetes, there is no specific guidelines. Uh, of course, we know that diabetic patients have an increased risk of infection and delay of, heating, of healing. So what we just give is diabetes should be controlled at the time of tattooing. And remember that the diabetic has to take sugar uh, during the tattooing. So that has to be prevented because you don't want to have an hypoglycemia in the middle of a long time session. So that's another thing, but remember that because we tend to forget this simple thing. Heart diseases, there are very few cases of heart infection. Usually it's custom, customers or patients who have a known valvulopathy and sometimes they don't know about it and it can lead to valve replacement. So it's very complicated because uh, so for this kind of patient, I refer them for the cardiologist for evaluating the risk of infection. Should they give antibioprophylaxis like we give for, uh, for um, dental care? I think that I just follow the cardiologist advice. Besides, you remember for the patient that if you have any general signs, fever, malaise, flu symptoms, weeks before, after tattooing, even if the tattoo looks normal, you should think that it could be an endocarditis. Coagulation disorders, people take tattoos despite coagulation disorders. Uh, for the coagulation disorder, like von Philbrand or hemophilia, there is no data in the literature. 
there is a territorial risk of hemorrhagia, as you can see. Me, I refer them to the specialist, but unfortunately, the hematologist often refuses, and I follow the uh, decision of the hematologist. For anticoagulant and aspirin, the first question is, why do you take it? Can we stop it for the session? But I can tell that in general, the tattoo session goes well if you maintain it. So, but it has to be a bit discussed where the doctors and the tattooists should be aware of it. Tattoo and pregnancy, there is no data. The inf complications are the same uh, as for everyone. Of course, the design will deform with pregnancy, but still, is there a risk that the pigment ink product transmits through the placenta to the baby? It's possible theoretically because we know that there is nanoparticles in the tattoo ink, meaning some very small particles that are available, possible to go. So in this indication, I honestly suggest not to do tattoos during pregnancy. This was an example of patient who was actually pregnant and got tattooed, got this infection. This was a bit of a problem because this mycobacter infection needed antibiotics that are forbidden during pregnancy. Hopefully for this patient, this condition can also self-heal with no treatment. That explains, that shows you what is a problem that comes if you have a complication when being pregnant. So it's better not to have done it when pregnant. At least if you know that you're pregnant, of course. Breastfeeding, well, that's the same thing, actually. Uh, there is nanoparticles, so technically it can go through the breast, through the milk. So it's been still suggested even by La Leche League to wait 9 to 12 months after birth when the child is no longer dependent solely on breast milk before getting a tattoo. And that sounds like, a, again, a proper advice. So uh, even though it is unclear, it is always possible to delay the tattoo. Lastly, and I will be done, chronic inflammatory immunosuppression treatment and tattoos. I've been studying a lot of patients with different diseases to see how it goes, and we have lots of patients who undergo tattooing with any no problem. Uh, and this is just the work we did last year, with, uh, two years ago, with Sophie uh, Georgin Lavial about auto inflammatory diseases. We just sent a questionnaire to 197 patients. 25% have a tattoo. Among them, 66% per, have been tattooed after the diagnosis of the disease. So we wanted to, that's the most important thing, these 27 patients, what happened to them? Uh, well, you see that the main contingent have a, fever, um, a Mediterranean fever disease. But you see only one has asked advice to the physician before the tattoo, and five only out of the 27 have asked, have warned the tattooists that they have these rare diseases. So, that's a bit of a problem not to inform anyone of what you are, of your condition. And as you can see, a lot were under treatment. They had colchicine, most of them. Sometimes IL-1 or corticosteroids, metotrexate. Almost everyone, it goes fine. 92% had no side effects, two reported side effects, and the side effects were just local swelling. So it's a bit of, oh, is it really like a real complication or just a complaint? So this shows that in this study, uh, tattoos, it's uh, at least with cold kissing, it's really safe uh, to, to uh, get a tattoo, even if you have this kind of condition. Because as a patient, you are exposed to the very same condition I've been through since uh, half an hour. But what do you feel the most? You feel infection, you feel that the infection will go elsewhere, and you feel think that maybe the delay of healing will be important. And of course, you are going to think, does my own disease is going to flare after the tattoo? So what do we take into account again? As I told you, whatever disease you have should always be controlled, stable, and non-evolutive. That's kind of logic. Uh, if you have cutaneous involvement, you can check, is there a risk that the skin symptoms goes in the tattoo or not? And is there areas to avoid? As I said, no cutaneous lesion if you don't know what it is. A patient with systemic scleroderma, I didn't talk about that, but people who have the skin which becomes sclerotic, it should be avoided on the sclerotic area because the skin will not heal normally. And a paralyzed limb should be avoided because the blood circulation, the, the nerves, everything works differently and you may have a problem, you may theoretically uh, get some ulcers or things like that. Even though I have to admit, I have never read about complication of tattoos on paralyzed limb, and I don't know if there are patients with paralyzed limbs who have been tattooed on their paralyzed limb. So that would be something interesting to know because it could be that experience shows that actually it's totally safe. But right now, for me, it's no. 
If you have immunosuppressive treatment, it's simple. If you are in the face of attack of your treatment, no tattooing. That's kind of logic. You will have to find the minimal or maintenance dosage that you have for some time. For corticotherapy, it's said that 10 milligrams or more is already have an impact on tattoo healing. So technically, you should wait to be under 10 milligrams to get a tattoo. For the other systemic treatment, it's really a case-by-case -case evaluation. Hydroxychloroquine, colchicine, disulin, there is no precaution because these treatments are not affecting uh, the tattoo healing. We have wrote with the Club Rheumatism and Inflammation a series of guidelines regarding if you are taking anti-TNF, anti-EIL-17 and anti-IL-6A. And I have to write about anti-genus uh, kinase uh, treatments. Basically, we have suggested when uh, on this um, tool guides uh, that also being published in English, we gave the, we provide the delay you should make between the treatment according to the treatment and uh, the tattooing procedure. Besides, you should have a tattoo fully healed without any infectious or inflammation before uh, the, the treatment. Lastly, the tattooist professional wants the tattooist, I think, flawless hygiene, new bottles, and I always suggest to the patient a, a shorter session just to see how the skin reacts. And of course, if you have any unusual reaction, you seek advice, and not only to the tattooist, but also to the, your physician to see if it's normal or not what's happening. Comorbidities, don't forget other comorbidities. If you suffer diabetes, cirrhosis, et cetera, you have to take into account anti plasmid anti coagulation anti-vitamin K, even though I said it should be safe, everything should be taken into account. This is some case of the literature, a sad case of a kid who had leukemia. And actually he was tattooed again when he was thinking he was in remission and it was not the case, he was relapsing. And unfortunately he has died of a sepsis according to the article after tattooing. That was really an unlucky con con combination. Another case that was published several years ago in the newspaper, a patient with cirrhosis who went to take sea bath three days after tattooing in the Gulf of Mexico. And you should never go to the sea. You see that he had a big um, risk factor with cirrhosis and he did this infection with this very aggressive germ vibrio vulnificus and died. Although it's said that it's due to contaminated tattoo, but no, it's due because the Tattoos have been the port of entry, the door of the infection, because of not respecting a basic rule, which is no swimming after tattooing. That should be given as an advice by the tattooist. So there could have been a mistake also in the delivery of the information. Lastly, to show you that everything is possible, this is a patient with renal transplant who got this very unusual rash with these very strange germs, uh, which is a yeast or a, a mold, a mold, sorry. Uh, and he has to be treated three months with voriconazole, which is a very strong treatment. Uh, so you can see the combination of the immunosuppression and the impact it has on the germ. So to conclude, there is no absolute contraindication, only relative ones related to your condition, your treatments, and the timing you want to get the tattoo. What you fear is infection, unusual germs, delay of healing, and I insist a tattoo project is never a hurry. It can always be postponed to a better time. So I thank you for your attention. And I have time for some questions. Well, thank you very much, Nicola, uh, for this uh, brilliant and very complete presentation. So I think uh, all of us uh, found it very interesting, illustrated, and uh, practical information for patients and doctors. So um, now we will uh, look for the chat and answer some questions that the, the audience has uh, asked us. Um, so we'll... Uh, look together if we have some new questions uh, and I will uh, ask you uh, Nicola some questions that uh, we received before um, so um, one uh, one uh, colleague he's a chair member of the Finnish immune deficiency patient organization uh, asked us if there's a checklist available for information of hygiene and aseptic uh, aspect uh, before getting tattoos so maybe do you think um, this is uh, inside the practical data that you published in uh, 2018 in American Journal of Clinical Dermatology or, or not so you were asking for information for hygiene and aseptic aspects Hello, do you we think have such a checklist not, Hello, we have a checklist but it's not uh, published in this newspaper but it's uh, by the EADV the European Academic of Dermatovenerology we have um, 
like a leaflet about uh, hygiene and asepsis, so which is available. Uh, the website is just being re-updated, re so I think they have disappeared, but it should be soon. So it's on the eadv.org. Uh, but basically, you have to remember that the tattooist have himself a checklist that he's usually giving advices uh, to follow uh, about uh, hygiene and aesthetics, especially basically it is uh, no sun, no uh, no swimming pool, no sea water, to wash with water and soap. It's usually enough. There's no reason to give disinfectant systematically, no, no antibiotic as prevention, and, uh, and not to scratch uh, the tattoo uh, after healing. But usually the tattooist will also give uh, professional tattooists will give uh, a checklist also. Otherwise, yes, we have this checklist mm. available on adv.org. So that's uh, precious. So maybe uh, this this uh, uh, person from uh, the Finnish Immune Deficiency Patient Organization, he's asking, they have a new web page coming out soon. And do you think it would be possible for them to share this leaflet uh, on their website, maybe in the future? Yeah, the leaflets can be, uh, of course, uh, shared. It can be also translated if they want in mm -hmm. Finnish, in Swedish, it's possible, yes. So uh, I let this, uh, it's Marit Nitkowski, Nitikowski. I don't know if uh, she is uh, on listening to us, but uh, maybe, um, she could get this leaflet, uh, for, or maybe you know her. It's better that she send me a mail then. I, I think I, I will find it faster. Okay, so that's very nice of you. Then there's uh, another question regarding tattoos. Is there any difference with the technique or colors whilst having tattoo? And uh, some techniques are less invasive and the color doesn't go so seep under skin. Any recommendation or no goes? No, uh, tattoo is, is always a tattoo. It's always uh, putting it uh, in the dermis. There is no uh, light away uh, as a regular technique. Of course, as regards permanent makeup, we have for the eyebrows this microblading, but it's only for eyebrows, where the ink is a little bit more superficial, that is true. And microblading is actually more recommended than uh, permanent makeup for the eyebrows because it gives a better natural look than the regular uh, permanent makeup. But for regular tattoos, as I showed, no, no, there is nothing to do. It's put to be permanent and that's it. Only w uh, if it goes very quickly away, there's a problem with the ink or with the quality of the tattooist that has done the tattooing. Okay, thank you. So we have a, a question from the panelists. What if you have eczema, what do you advise? Well, eczema, uh, eczema is a wide question because it, do you mean uh, contact eczema or dermatite, atopic dermatitis? If you have ex, uh, atopic eczema, as I said, uh, you have to have a disease which is just under control and the skin which is well moisturized and then you can get your tattoo. If you have a contact allergy uh, to a known uh, uh, component, well, we we normally know nowadays what are the components and the ingredients in the ink, so we can check in advance if there is a risk of contact allergy due to the tattooing or, of course, due to the uh, moisturizer, of course, that has to be checked. But otherwise, uh, there is not much more to say than you can get the tattoo as uh, suggested before as a precaution on the talk. Okay. Um, I see some, I am looking for some more questions. So about patients with common variable immunodeficiency, uh, how safe is it to have tattoo? And I was also thinking in my mind, uh, uh, seeing everything you presented, Maybe uh, there is something to do in the future in that uh, kind of uh, uh, entity because uh, you didn't present uh, any work on that specific uh, kind uh, of patient. No, actually, the question is what kind of infections these patients are already prone to. If uh, I, I don't, I don't think they are prone to skin infection very easily. I don't see this kind of patient in my consultation, so uh, there is no more, no, not much more precaution to do. Uh, then again, uh, the, what, what I have presented right now, I, I don't see anything anything special. Actually, that's funny because that would be interesting to know if these people who have immunodeficiency, uh, if they are more protected against actually allergies because if their immunity is impaired, I wonder if they were going to get less problems. But 
for the infection, I think that there's nothing much more to do than, than again, a regular patient. Okay, so maybe uh, a future work in the ARN Rita on those patients with a, a nice collaborative work, maybe with uh, Nicola Kluger. <laughs> so, uh, another question. Hello, what happens with a patient with Bruton disease? With the, so, it's a immune deficiency. Uh, with immunoglobulin therapy and with bronchiectasy, but no dermatological disease. So I don't know if Nicola, you're familiar with this kind of uh, immunodeficiency. It's a it's a antibody deficiency, uh, and patients can display uh, bronchiectasia and have frequent uh, pulmonary infection. Do you ever have you ever had patients that underwent uh, uh, tattoos? No, no, never. But again, it's back to the uh, regular risk. So if you say that they have no risk for skin infection in general, uh, and they don't make any complication after surgery, it's simple. You have to ask yourself, do you have risk when you have a, sur a surgery, uh, like a skin surgery? If no, most likely there is no reason to have a, you will not have a specific risk added to your own condition. It will be just a risk of the tattoo procedure by a mistake by the tattooist or a lack of disinfection that you didn't do, pro fin, a lack of uh, good hygiene after. But I don't think for this disease, I don't see any problem when I listen to, uh, mm. to you. Yeah. So another question, when to know it's the best time to tell to a client with a psoriasis? Uh, well, as I said, the tattoo has to be, uh, sorry, the psoriasis has to be uh, Quiescent. Uh, it doesn't mean that the skin has to be normal. It just means that the patient is telling you that uh, uh, I have no, I have always the same patches on the elbows and they are the same, but everything is the same. Then you can go for the for the tattoo. Uh, otherwise, the, the only the, the only contraindication is patient that tells you I start to have a lot right now. It's getting worse. Or of course, I just started this new anti-TNF alpha treatment to control it, and then you have to wait a bit that he is in this um, maintenance therapy to discuss. But otherwise, you can do it whenever you want. Okay. So do you, you, you said there's a checklist that the tattoo has to give at the end of the tattoo. Is there a, a, a post list? It means that do you have a pre-treatment to make on the skin before getting tattooed, for example, uh, uh, hydrating your skin, etc. What do you advise? Yeah, well, it's only for the patient who have tendency to have dry skin. So, for instance, atopic dermatitis or ichthyosis, then you really have to moisturize a lot. The skin usually, I say to the atopic patient, like one week before, really put it correctly. But they usually do it already that your skin is not extra dry. But otherwise, for for a, a patient who has a normal appearing skin, there is nothing peculiar to do uh, before tattooing is always eat well, rest well, no alcohol, that's what the tattooist will tell you, and that's it. But you don't really have to have a special routine before if your skin is usually normal. Okay, so I have a question, I'm not sure I understand, so maybe you understand it. What are the dangers of using numbing creams? I don't know what numbing creams are, uh, how to apply them safely. Yeah, it's um, EMLA basically, it's like this. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, well, there, there is no, it's more like a, uh, there is no specific risk. Uh, it's just that usually tattooists and tattoo people don't use this numbing cream because uh, it's not part of the procedure. You take the mm -hmm. tattoo, it's painful, but it goes with it. But there are still some people who put numbing cream. So it's just a problem rather for the tattooist. Some doesn't like it because it changes a bit the aspect of the skin before tattooing. So they may not like it, but as such, uh, there is no risk. Uh, there can be allergies, so uh, to the numbing cream, but that's very rare situation. But uh, that's more a problem of uh, how did you get it? Because you should have a prescription usually, at least in France. <laughs> uh, so I don't. I know that some countries have a numbing cream with not a contra a prescription, but it's more like this kind of conceptual problem. It's not a risk as such, to my knowledge, uh, to use it. Okay, so we have some other question. Um, I will not say the ones that you already answered. Um, what are the so considering autoimmune disease? Uh, I think you already answered. Is it a general advice to avoid having new tattoos when you are immunocompromised? I think you already answered yeah. kind of that. 
Yeah, well, it depends on uh, no, you can you can get it, but it depends on the level of immunodepression, uh, and it depends on the treatment which is undergoing. I went through fast the biologic, but for instance, we know that IL-17 inhibitors they can uh, affect the tattoo healing. Uh, that's the same with anti-TNF. Uh, I got patient tattooed with methotrexate. There was no problem. So it will really depend on the on the immunosuppressive treatment that is uh, ongoing. Uh, but you can take a tattoo. It's just a question of timing again and of being warned in advance that it happens, of course. Okay. So the, there's just a comment from the Vasculitis Suka organization. They are saying it's a very interesting topic and they receive a lot of questions about tattoos on, uh, on their online groups. And uh, so they, they were very happy to listen to your talk. So there was another question from uh, Jeanne. Is there a connection to make in the use of piercing and tattoos just because it's something foreign to your body on autoimmune diseases? Uh, and, no, it's actually uh, tattoos and piercing are completely different procedures because the piercing is just a needle you insert and, and that's it. So the main risk for piercing is infection. So I didn't talk about piercing here, but if you have immunosuppression and piercing, I would say a big no because the prevalence of infection is very high. Uh, it's almost 25% of infection or something happens, so you have really a risk of sepsis and this kind of thing. And uh, we have cases on diabetic patients, etc. So it's a no, at least oral facial tat piercings or, but very. Uh, whereas tattoos, it's way way better tolerated with a lower risk of infection. Still, even though I show pictures, that's still not what we see uh, in practice. So uh, there is not really a common thing. It's actually completely different procedures. Okay, we so have two I... last questions. <laughs> so, what can a client do as a first aid when tattoo is getting infected and preventing infection getting worse? Um, didn't you the beginning? What was the beginning of the question? Ah, what can a client do as first aid when tattoo is getting infected and preventing infection? Uh, he, he will have, anyway, he will have to wash the tattoo with, a, with a soap and water, and then he has to contact a physician. It doesn't have to be a dermatologist, it can be a general practitioner. And then if it looks infected, it will be either local antibiotic or oral antibiotic according to the aspect. The only thing that you can do is water and soap, maybe disinfectant if you have chlorhexidine, for instance, and that's it. But you have to contact your physician anyway for the to get the prescription of an antibiotic if necessary. Okay, one, two last, but you already spoke about that. Regarding systemic lupus erythematosus and juvenile dermatomyositis, is there a contraindication for tattooing? I think you already kind of answered. No, the same. same treatment. Yes. You can, get, you can get lupus on the skin, but it is then it's treated like a lupus, so it doesn't matter. So, well, uh, Nicola, I think now we have reached the end of this webinar. So on the behalf of the ERN uh, Rita, uh, we would like to say a wa very warm thank you uh, for this excellent session and for the, the long discussion that followed. And thanks again uh, for everybody who was attending to this uh, Tuesday lunch uh, with Rita webinar. And before we go, please note that the next uh, Tuesday lunch with Rita uh, webinar will take place on the 6th of December and it will be on cytokine storm syndromes. And uh, please uh, share your feedback on this webinar by answering our survey that will appear just when you close your webinar. So don't forget to uh, answer that survey. Thank you very much for attending and uh, very much uh, thank you, Nicolas, uh, for all that information. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.